So guys, I finally was able to get some henna from Lush. That's the only henna I use. And it's in this beautiful package. It's the Henna Noir. So it has indigo for black hair. And I'm doing this because henna makes your hair thicker and attached to gaps to your hair strands and just kind of like latches on. And that makes it feel thicker. And I have thin hair. It makes your hair very shiny, very healthy. Um, so I'm excited to do this. I'm ruining this pretty package, but I'm gonna put whatever I don't use in a plastic bag. So my henna recipe is very simple. I got a pot of water to boil, and this is what the bar of the henna looks like. Since I have such thin hair, I don't need that much henna, I'm assuming. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead, just cut some off. I'm not gonna grate it, I'm not gonna shave it. I'm just gonna put it in a bowl and then pour the hot water over it and stir it around and it kind of dissolves by itself. Okay, so the only metal I used is the knife to cut it up in bits. So I have a glass bowl, I have a plastic spatula. So I'm gonna put, I used half of it because at my age now, I also now have gray hair. So not only am I gonna be using it for my, the hair conditioning properties, I wanna see how it turns out on my gray hair if it temporarily covers it. I know this won't be a t permanent thing, but I'd be interested to see what it does it in a temporary situation. So I sealed it in a Ziploc bag and I'll put it in a dry, cool place. And I can do like henna conditioning treatments in between when I want to. Um, but I think I'm going to try to do a henna treatment for my hair once a month from here on out. So this can be for October. Alrighty, so she's boiling. And take some of the hot water and pour it in. Stir it up. Let it dissolve on its own. So it's going to be like nice thick pancake batter. The henna is very drying. Um, so I do add some olive oil to the concoction. And I do prep my hair before applying it as well. So I'm just going to put a couple of teaspoons of olive oil in there. I use extra virgin organic co-pressed olive oil. Okay. Wow, this is like a lot for my hair. <laughs> Definitely feels like it. And I don't care if it's not all the way smooth. So I got my supplies, my gloves, which I'm going to throw away after I use, and I'm going to put a base of coconut oil on top of my hair. I'm going to start in the front class where most of my grays are, because it's not like bleach or anything. I want to be able to have the henna start where I want it to be the longest, which is the front. So let's get started. Ready? so I look crazy. I went ahead and sectioned my hair. So it's semi-damp, it's not all the way dry. I also, while I was in the twist, went ahead and just felt my ends and just did like, oops, a quick trim. I did that to each, each braid. I cut off about half an inch. Anything that just felt straggly. 
Okay, so let's go ahead. This is the beautiful mixture. I'm going to coat my forehead, ears with coconut oil. Uh, brings me back to the relaxer days. The <laughs> back of my neck. I do not want it staining my skin. So I'm going to start with this piece first. So it kind of naturally just popped into two separate pieces. So I'm going to twist this one. I start with this one. I just do want to put a little coconut oil because like I said, henna is very drying and my hair is moist. Okay, so let's get started. And henna is supposed to help with shedding too and that's one thing I noticed getting older and menopause, I can talk. Oh. It's that my hair is shedding like there's no tomorrow. Oh, it feels so good because it's nice and warm from the hot water. It's no longer hot, hot. I'm gonna do it over the bowl because this is messy. She's no longer active on YouTube, but her videos are still up and I just pulled it up as a reference. Her name is Marden, Marden Miss, Huck, Miss Huxtable and um, she put her henna on dry hair too. So, like I said, my hair is not totally dry, it is damp because I had to like damp it a little bit to get it in the different sections but really concentrating it on the front front part of my face because that's where my grays are. Like I said, I just want my want my hair to stop shedding. It's kind of lost its shine to age menopause. Gotta love getting older. I went to the doctor um, for my diabetes follow-up and did some lab work. All my vitamins are totally off, so low. My iron has been low for like, seems like forever. <laughs> and if we can't get it up, I might have to get iron infusions, which is not fun. I hate needles. But I'm so used to freaking IVs now that it's second nature. My vitamin D's down, vitamin E, everything. And I eat green le leafy, I eat a lot of vegetables. I'm always outside and they said my vitamin D is so low. And especially in the summertime, because people usually can just keep it up just be, by being outside. And I have no excuse, I'm always outside. Like I run, and because my vitamin D is so low, I gotta be careful because I can really just easily fracture my bones with doing nothing. And the YouTuber that I adore her hair videos, even though she's no longer active, these videos are like so old, but so relevant still. She said to keep it on for six hours, and I started at 7.30. I'm not gonna be up that long, and I don't wanna sleep in this, and I'm not gonna sleep in this. <laughs> definitely stretches your hair out. <laughs> Try not to get it on the floor. It's all over my countertops. I'm really concentrating it on the ends. And another thing, 
with menopause. The brain fog is real. And I just feel like I'm slurring my words. It's like, dang. Like, I know what I want to say, but it doesn't come out right sometimes. It's frustrating. see a lot of gray in the front so let's go over the bowl I don't know more henna hits different feels good and due to the properties of a henna it's hard to like separate your hair like do like what people would do with a dye job Thank God my hair is really thin, <laughs> so that way I can just mush it in between my hair strands. It's over my hair so I can't hear. This is really messy. Well, goodbye to this shirt. I guess this is now my henna dyeing shirt. I'll wash it, separate it, Se not with other clothes, like separate it and wash it by itself. But I guess I'll wear this from now on when you tell me I'm going to henna my hair. another pro having thin hair doesn't take long to apply anything to my hair I would move it over here guys but when I say this is like a crime scene of caca pin up everywhere I just plopped on my foot And I'm going to be honest, because of the henna is all over my gloves, I'm out of practice. But not only that, did I put coconut oil on the other parts of my sections? No. No. And you know what? I thought this was going to be too much for my hair. But it's the right amount. I'll show you guys the aftermath. I'm almost done. I want to get in the back of my nape too because a lot of my grays are in the back of my head. I gotta make sure while it's wet to put it in a place where I don't mind. Because once this little freaker dries, do not, it's like rock hard. Do not move it. So I'm going to push it behind my ears. This one too, because it's really behind me. This on top. Hope to God I got the back of my It's everywhere.
Let me show you the aftermath. So, it's a little for me. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully my hair line doesn't turn black. And here's my sink. And my rug. And on my foot. But luckily I kept it localized just there. So let's get this cleaned up. Let's hopefully make sure everything washes off. So everything cleaned up. The only thing that's a casualty is my bath rug, so I have to buy another one. It wasn't that expensive. I got it from the Dollar Tree at the $5 section, so I'll do that again. And, but the sink cleaned up, the bowl cleaned up, yeah. And another casualty is my Levi shirt. In my forehead. Let's see if I can get some of this stuff out. <laughs> I don't want my forehead to be dyed, even though I put the oil on the bricks. Let's just part some of that off. Thank you to back to my neck, just in case. So I'm just going to go ahead and dry off my hands and leave this bad boy in for six hours. I mean four hours, not six. And we'll see how it does. Alright guys, so I'm in the bedroom just going to listen to TikTok and have the TV running in the background. But um... I was watching, I just subscribed to her TikTok channel, and she has a chronic illness of Crohn's disease, and unfortunately she had to have her large intestine and um, anus and colon removed, and she has to wear an ostomy bag, and she's very beautiful, bright, positive, energetic, but she also shows the other side, which I like, I like the yin and yang, I don't want to always see, I'm great, I want to see when you're not great, and she shares that, which I really appreciate it, but she also shares something with people that have chronic illness, they, they measure their energy in spoons, which I thought, I had to look it up, I didn't understand what it was, and basically, it's like, how many spoons do you have to spend a day? And what activities do you want to do that day and how many spoons will it take to do that, in, that activity and sometimes you have a no spoon day where you can't get out of bed and i have a disability but it's not a chronic illness my own vision but i push my limits to the point where i get extreme um, ocular migraines and also I call it ring of fire in my peripheral where I just can't see anything. It's just like all the lights, anything makes it glaring that I can't perceive anything. So I don't want to to disrespect people that have a chronic illness, so I'm not gonna call my my vision level spoons, but it's like I'll just say forks. So today I have so much planned for Sunday. If you notice there's not a lot I vlogged today. I wanted to pick up the trash in my in my yard, which you which I use a lot of my current vision for. I want I wanted to work in my garden and, and weed, which also uses a lot of my peripheral vision. Um, I wanted to do laundry, which I did, which uses a lot of my peripheral vision. I wanted to run, which I did not, because I had absolutely no forks left. After I spent it just doing laundry, I cleaned my bedroom, put up laundry, and um, cooked dinner, and that spent all of my forks, something that I'm sure with anyone else would just be easy peasy. It wasn't for me. I really struggled today, and I really wanted to do the henna treatment on my hair, and I pushed through, used the last, and this henna treatment was about, I would say, five forks, and I only had two, and I had to push myself through through it just to do it so 
I don't know. I just, I, I'm grateful to uh, discover new people on TikTok to learn about their journey and learn a lot about their journey. But not only does her experience with Crohn's disease and using the ostomy bag um, open my eyes, but also just the whole entire spoon theory that the chronic um, community use regards to their unit's energy. And I, it made me really think about how I push my peripheral vision to its limit. And it's like, do I want to use my peripheral for this activity? Or can I preserve it for something? Things more meaningful for me. Like, I use a lot of my peripheral vision at work, and I have to fall back on a lot of auditory tools because at hour six, I'm spent. And, you know, I have a job that is more than eight hours a day sometimes, and the rest of the time, I heavily rely on auditory which i struggle with this is so much information so yeah it's one of those things but you know i'm here i got a job i have a roof over my head i'm so freaking grateful but um to that young lady that shared her journey about her spoons and having a no spoons day i had an almost no pork day and it made me really appreciate my peripheral vision I really miss my central vision. I kind of realized, man, I just want to see what's in front of me. I had a couple of those moments today where I just got frustrated. I didn't want to see around the object. I wanted to see the object. But um, yeah, I did it. I got the tenant treatment. The only thing that I called for Sunday, but I hope you enjoy. And then after four hours of this thing in my head, I will show you the results. So I'm rinsing this out in 10 minutes. It's 10.21. Like, it's been in my hair since 7.30. I was going to try to do it for four hours, but I need this out of my hair now. But, you know, with indigo, you want it to be, you don't want it to be covered in plastic, from what I understand, from modern Miss Huxable. She said to let the oxygen get to it. You can definitely tell from the exposure being left out to dry. The indigo has done its thing and it's like black. <laughs> so, 10 minutes I'm washing this stuff out. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to use shampoo or anything for the first 24 hours, so. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about henna, is gonna take me forever in the shower to rinse this all out because it's gritty. It's like washing out sand. So that should be fun. So I should be in the shower for a minute. This process is so long, but so worth it. Cause I really do not want to ever use dye on my hair. So you gotta do what you gotta do. So after in the shower for a while, um, I rinsed everything out. Oh my God, my hair feels so freaking soft. Um, I did put some leave-in conditioner. Um, in regards to my grays, I have to ask my hubby if they've gone away. Um, but from what I could tell in my peripheral, sticking away out here, it looks very, very black. And even if it didn't take away my grays, that's fine. It was a hair mask, hair treatment anyway. Um, in my own mind, I'm not saying it is, but in my mind, in a acts like a protein, like a keratin treatment. Um, it binds to your hair. It fills the gaps in your hair. It makes your hair stronger. Um, it makes it fill and appear thicker. It makes it very, very shiny. And some of the low, pro low porosity hair, I'm used to that. So I'm glad that she feels soft, she feels strong. And from what I can tell, she looks shiny. So even if it didn't cover my grays, don't care. Um, I will gray gracefully, I guess. But I definitely want to do put henna back in my hair rotation and do it once a month just for the health of my hair. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.